Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over context action service or more specifically how to bind actions to keys and buttons and things like that. Uh, other than that, let's just get straight into it. Now, this will have to be done in a local script because um, of course we're uh, messing with the client here. I'm going to zoom in here and the first thing I'm going to do is create a variable and this will be for our context action service. So I'm going to name a context action service and that's going to refer to game get service context action service. Now what this does is this is the actual service we'll be using and this is how we'll be processing inputs. Now uh, for example sake I am going to make a function that will be uh, calling when the player uh, clicks a button. So I'm going to write local function and now this function isn't going to specifically do anything so I'm just going to call it um, example function and then it's also going to have some parameters but we'll come back to that later once I explain what's next. Now from there we can actually bind our function. So let's write context action service and then we can do bind action. Now the first parameter for bind action takes in a string and that's just the name of our action. So I'm just going to name it example. And the reason why we actually name our action is that for mobile devices uh, we can actually mess around with the buttons and stuff like that. And then the next parameter is the function itself. So I'm going to write example function. Now the third parameter is if we want to create a button for our mobile devices. Now because I'm on PC here and I don't necessarily uh, want to do anything for mobile because this is uh, an example tutorial, I'm just going to set this to false. And then after that we can pass in any keys we want or Xbox buttons or anything similar to that. So I'm going to write enum uh, key code and then you can, um, there's ev basically every key you have and Xbox controls as well. Now, now if you're looking for mouse inputs, we can go back here and write user input type and then we can also get our mouse buttons from here. As you can see, we have mouse button 1 and things like that. So if you want to use mouse inputs, you can also do that. But for this example, I'm just going to be using a key and I'll just set it to space. Now, within our function, we get three parameters passed. Our first one is our action name. Now, this one is very simple. If we print out the action name here so print action name what this is going to do is simply just print out whatever word is down here whatever you've set the action name to and then the next parameter after that is our input state now I'll get back to the input state in a second and then the one after that is our input object and I'll also get to that in a second now what input state is is the state of the input so let, for example let's say the player is pressing the button down the, f the input state will be begin and then when, when, when the button is released it will be the input state uh, end or either cancel. So if, if you want, only want your function to run when the button is pressed down this is how you check it. So you'd write something like if input state equal equals enum dot user input state and then you can actually see all the states here. Something like begin and then click then, then you can actually do it. So let's say Let's say, let's print hello here and we click play. As you can see, when I click uh, my spacebar here, it's uh, printing hello. Now you might be wondering, why am I not jumping? And that's because by default, context action service actually overwrites that key. So if you want to bring back functionality to that key, you actually have to return something. So we're going to do return, return context action result. And then from there, we can click pass. And what this allows it to do is run our code run our functions code but still bring back normal functionality so as you can see I can now jump around as normal now as well as be printing hello now if let's say I did remove this input state here this check and I click play here as you can see hello will actually now fire twice and the reason to that is every time I click it fires twice and the reason why that's happening is because it's firing while the key is being pressing down so while space is being pressed down and it's getting fired again when uh, space is getting let go. So if you only want to fire it once, once again, make sure you bring in a check here. Other than that, we can also check for input object as bind action can also take uh, much more uh, key binds than just one. So if we want to bind something else to it, we can also do that. So we can do uh, key code F. And if you want to check in between them within your function, the way you do that is with your input object. So you could do if input object uh, key code 
and then you can also check it from there. So enum dot key code, and then you can check if space uh, van print pressing space, and then we can write else for example, or an else if if you have even more, and write something like uh, pressing. I think that was set to F. Yeah, pressing F. So we click play here. We wait a bit. And as you can see, when I click space, it says pressing space. And when I click F, it says pressing F. And that's all of Context Action Service. Hopefully that helped out with anything you're making. And bye.